Anyways. All right. Yeah. Staying on the staying on the Red Wing topic. Um, I do want to touch on Marit Sider real quick. He is a top of the Calder voting, which is rookie of the year. Uh, Lucas Raymond is second. Uh, and Trevor Zagrass is third for the Anaheim Ducks. So that's amazing. We won and two. Uh, NHL.com paneled their writers, and Cider got 70, uh, 70 voting points. So 13 of the 15 voted uh, him first. Uh, and so it, breaking down his points real quick, uh, Luke, sorry, Lucas Raymond, two, Zagrass, three. Uh, Maurice Cider has 41 points. 36 assists, 17 power play points, 116 block shots, 96 hits, and five goals. Uh, his average ice time is 23 minutes and two seconds. So he is fourth in total points compared to all the rookies, offense and defense. To me, that is amazing. Now, a couple weeks ago, Miko asked me if I thought that, was it Moritz or Lucas? Miko, I can't remember. You I, just thought, I just asked if you thought any of the wings could win it. I said I no. either. I said no because Trevor Zagrass was on a roll. And yeah. he sensed that it was two or three weeks ago, since that he's gone cold. And so in the voting, right, for the points, uh Cider had 70. Second was Lucas Raymond with 42, and then Zagrass with 41. So he is by far the top candidate for the Calder uh cup. So so that is I was wrong, but gladly. Gladly wrong there, uh, but that's a little summary I wanted to, to mention. And side note, uh, which I don't think a lot of people know, Claude Lemieux is Maurice Sider's agent. Really? Yeah. That's a weird. Yes. That's a weird. Twist. That is why. That's <laughs> partly why he'll be in town. I know. Like, flip it back to us seeing him uh, next weekend. So I did not know that. We found that out. That's kind of why he's in town. Uh, but also, it's very cool. So interesting. Small world. So anyway. That is the summary of cider. And I think that's amazing. I think that he should get it. It's a, it's fantastic that a defenseman is going to get it. Typically it's offense and forwards that get that, um, award. So in having said that, John, um, you know, I know you wanted to compare this a little bit to pistons up and wings down and you had a couple questions. You want to touch on those real quick? Yeah, I just wanted to say that um, kind of the past couple of weeks, we've seen a bit of a role reversal between the Pistons and the Red Wings, yeah. not necessarily in performance, but certainly in terms of uh, engagement, excitement, entertainment yeah. value. Um, the bunch of videos were posted to Twitter um, and social media about uh, Little Caesars Arena, absolutely packed, uh, raucous crowd cheering on, the rookie of the year, potential, possible, probable rookie of the year, Kate probable, Cunningham. Right? And um, and it's just like everyone's having fun. It's just, it's just like shades of 2004. Um, not to, again, not to say that the team is there, but the fan engagement, the fun, the energy level, the entertainment, um, it's there, folks. Go down, watch a game. Uh, How awesome would it be if we had two rookie of the years? That'd be incredible. I, I mean, that's just like the yeah. future. I mean, that's right, that like, just that would sums be... up. A statement that just so, sums up, yeah, right. where like yeah. where we're all at. I mean, Tigers, right. Lions, Red Wings. So we're going to talk about the Lions in a second. I think the Lions are poised to hopefully have a better season and are heading in the right direction. Yeah. Uh, that I, said, the Red Wings a few weeks ago, maybe a few months ago, it looked like the you know the Red Wings were overperforming. We knew that they were a young team, very young team. Uh, but they were they were winning a bunch of very key games and and that excitement was there and it was there. And then now we're talking about Blashell's failings. We're talking we're talking about a slide losing streaks. And uh, Darren McCarty showed uh, shared that video that I definitely saw of I think it was a timeout um, of Blashell talking to the team and the team just yeah. could not care less that their coach was talking to them. They, they were talking amongst themselves. It was, it was, well, they, yeah, they, they, you were, you're not seeing the response you should be seeing from a coach's timeout. Correct. Yeah. And my only, I wonder, comment, go ahead, Miko. And then I had just have, one I was going to say, yeah, I was going to say my, con I would wonder if like, if these guys have hit a wall, like a young team hitting a wall and just being like, you know, you played with your hair on fire for like the first half of the season. Well, 75 the second half of the season. Yes. To your, yeah. to and your point, I was sorry, go ahead and I'll finish. Yeah. I was going to say like, yeah, like you play that 
much of the season with your hair on fire and you're trying to like, you know, muster and, and, and tough out wins. And I think eventually like that can only get you so far, you know, and eventually when right. in a season where you're playing 80 plus games, like you're, you're probably taxed by this point. Not that it's an excuse, but I just wonder if that's, if that has to, if that plays a part in what's happening with the wings lately. I think. And so John tears to your comment of are the wings like overperforming i think the wings actually are good i think they played 75 percent of the season very well and yes i think we're having a young team getting exhausted and using everything up front in the season through the all-star past the all-star break and then just yeah we're having a, a fall off but i think the team is good i don't and and, and overperforming i, I maybe a little bit, but they, they played well for a majority of the season. You know what I mean? You have to give them that. Right. And, yeah. And that was, and that was kind of my comment. It was overperforming earlier in the season, led everyone to think that, Oh, Hey, maybe they're, they're farther along. They're better than we thought they were. And then now that this very like kind of reasonable kind of sure. return, yeah, return from orbit kind of happened. Like, oh, they're over- not as good as we thought they were. Yeah. Okay. But I wouldn't call yeah. it overperforming. I would just you wouldn't call it you wouldn't really because I would say that I think offensively they overperformed. I think they over overperformed in such a way offensively that it covered up their deficiencies defensively. And I think now we're starting to see like those deficiencies show up this late in the season where I mean the game tonight, they gave up three goals in the first period. Like it's it's not there and they're not getting because of like how much they're giving up defensively, I don't think they have the energy. And, you know, the the ability to kind of replace that offensively, like, again, talking about like maybe if they're a little taxed, like you just don't have that well to dip into like you did early in the season. 